are you looking at England at the moment? I just, I just want to get both of your perspectives on England. Are you looking at England and thinking, ha ha? Are you not even looking? Are you thinking, what the hell is going on? Have you got other things to be getting on with? Um, I'm kind of more thinking, it's not great for the tournament. It really isn't. Really? Yeah, it's not good for the tournament. A couple of uh, factors. One, you know, you spoke about Northern Hemisphere rugby, and actually it is an opportunity for Northern Hemisphere, uh, Hemisphere rugby to win this tournament, but we kind of almost need everybody. <laughs> yes. you know, all your cards party. in the deck. Yeah, we need everyone, um, you know, not everyone can win it, but all, everyone <laughs> not can... Not three can, of them on the same yeah, side. everyone can <laughs> contribute here, you know, so there's that. Um, uh, you know, England are the biggest you know, rugby nation in the world in many ways. It's important for them to be strong. Media interest isn't as much, and we know how important sort of you know, the British media is as well. It's not the same if you know if England aren't, aren't doing well, and it can sort of. I, I remember the was it the World Cup? Um, um, you know, we, <laughs> we did we did the the fan park. Um, oh Jesus Christ! That was in 2015. Yeah, the tour was six people in there. In that Richmond. was the grimmest thing I've ever. <laughs> and Uruguay. That was it. it should have been. You know, it should have been crazy. It should have been that loads of fun. It awful. should have been brilliant. But, you know, England were gone and nobody cared. And that's not good for, you know, being in this in, yeah. in this country and more broadly, just the exposure rugby gets around the world. So there's that. Am I crying to my tea that England are performing as well at the moment? No, I'm not. But I'd like them to get to a level that, you know, you know, retains interest for the sort of wider public, really. Where but, do you... Where do you think they've got good players do you think they could be you know they go in and put a performance against Argentina and, and I mean a performance and get a win do you think well, okay this could start something yeah, I kind of in the back of my mind but I think that about a lot of teams you know I think Australia could potentially do something Eddie Jones could do something I think he's a kind of a miracle worker now he gets inside the head doesn't yeah, he yeah he does and and he's I think his head has gone a little bit at the moment you know with some of the stuff he said is kind of you know silly but that is Eddie but, deflect 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 but, so this they could put a run together right? you know I, you know, RG are kind of flying in under the radar they could put a run together we know we talk about the other side of the draw I don't think I think Wales are in a bit of trouble I don't think their performance level will, will, will get them too far but in England you do think they have the constituent parts to be able to um, you know, turn a few people over. Now, do I think they'll do it? I actually don't because this coach isn't working actually and we've seen even when England do good things um, and they're set up and there's overlaps, it reminded taking me, them. yeah, not taking them, not even thinking about them. They're, uh, and the point that you made earlier on about Ireland under Joe Smith towards the end of his reign. And I think Joe Smith was a brilliant coach, but something was missing that the players weren't connecting or they were too um, myopically focused on the game plan and not able to see what was going on and playing out in front of them. And I can see that that is what's happening with uh, England. They're too regimented, re regimented, they're too inhibited, and they're not playing what they, you know, they're not maximizing their, their performance and not playing what's in front of them. Owen Farrell gets suspended. I see the lineup. I screenshot. I send it to him. Going to Ireland. I have a feeling they're going to do something. All right? They peed off about their captain being suspended and this whole media tornado that was next to him. And and I saw the balance of the team and I was like, wow. I think Courtney Laws was playing six. There's a big old team going to Ireland. And I was thinking, I think they can do it. I I, I couldn't even say that they were going to win, but I thought they're going to draw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Good call. Cool. Cool. At least at least it was something. And I, and I sent a, a message to Alex and I was like, Look, I actually think they can do it. And they, they get thumped by 30. And I watched, I didn't watch much of that game because I was commentating, uh, I think it was Scotland, France that night. But I just don't think they... So to answer your question, they definitely have talent. I mean, don't get me wrong. In that starting 15, there's a serious lineup of big, old, experienced, talented rugby players. I just don't think they produce enough rugby. And I only watched 20 minutes of it, but some of it was quite one-dimensional, slow, slow in a, in a, predictable in a, stuff. And in, it was, in a game that needs... It was a driving mall, boom, get a big yeah. Manu up the middle, or Joe Marchant, and then Billy Vonipala on his own, and they're just one-off runners. And if you're not South Africa, if yeah. you're not mountain men, it just doesn't work for, for most people. So I'm a little bit sad about it because I really agree we need everybody to step up. But now the reality, and without disrespecting anybody, they beat Japan 
they will be in the quarters. And then out of 80 minutes, I will take anybody on to predict what's going to happen exactly. However good we know rugby, we will make mistakes. And they just need one mistake. They don't need 100. They need one mistake and they'll be in the semi. And then all of a sudden, they could get Ireland or France that are drenched after a quarterfinal, after playing. Five. You just don't know. So, so the reality is that I'm disappointed for the quality of, of talent that they have on the field not to deliver more just open, positive, exciting rugby. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they're doomed. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, uh, but, you know, yeah, I don't, yes, we lost to Fiji, but I looked at that first half and I was like, that's more how we want to play. Johnny May, one-on-one, -on -one scores. Manu made two busts up the middle. Uh, Ollie Lawrence made two busts. There was width. or Both wingers touched it. Um, the fullback got a run. And then, second half, it was like, okay, we're in a, we're in a fight now. Let's go back. Let's revert. Box kick, slow the ball down, one-out runners. And it was like... It's not how you do it, you know. Mitch, I thought Mitchell played really well in terms of lifting the tempo. I actually think it's a good thing he's coming to the squad. Um, but then, you know, he makes that break off, that kick off down the left, and then there was acres of space just to move it, and we hit that guy up turnover, and then we ended up nearly conceding that's, the other That's way. a really good point, and it's not just with England. I think that's common across, you know, many many teams is that when the pressure comes on, they revert. Mm. And what you actually have to do is you have to play like it means nothing when it means yeah. everything. Yeah. Yes. That's the key. And that's what, you know, France is very capable yeah. Even yeah. Friday night in front of New Zealand, 90 people, yeah. 67 yeah, yeah. million people. Like well, we, we've seen What do you mean? It's, so, uh, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you the prime example. And, and he, I know he's injured, but um, to Mac, when he, um, in that autumn series a couple of years oh, ago, yeah. all and Blacks, he's he's on. He all he throws it over his right shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, Campisi in the semi final yeah. against New Zealand throws it over his shoulder. Who does that? Yeah. Like, that was the height of pressure in the World Cup semi final against your arch rivals. And he can do it because he's not inhibited. Incredible. Um, the, the question I sort of, and forgive me for asking you about 07. Oh, Jesus, come on. But I'm interested in both, because both of you had long and distinguished careers, but you both also had a World Cup where, it, from you know, it was, and actually you had, you had a couple as well, Tins. Well, but, it's okay if you win one. It's okay if you win bad ones if you but, win but, one. But, but 07, well, actually, funny enough, when you were talking about World Cup warm-ups as well, <laughs> Ireland in 2019, they, had, they were out of the tournament from that World Cup warm-up against England when England put 60 on them. I mean, it, it, it was a mortal blow to their morale and their hopes and their credibility, as it were. Was there anything from 07 that... Was there anything you could have done when you felt the tide going out with hindsight that could have turned that around? Or sometimes in sport, is it just... It just is a movement you cannot change for love nor money. I honestly thought on each step along the path, we were going to change it. Now, this was going to be the change. This was the catalyst for change. And, and you know, everybody else was, was wrong. And this isn't, this isn't the momentum. We can flip it and, and we'll, we will be back again. And, and I, I honestly thought that we had a horrific entry into that World Cup. The Six Nations beforehand was really, really strong for us. We were yes. brilliant. We should have won a Grand Slam. You know, we, top, top performance of, that, you know, of my rugby career in terms of, of Ireland. And then we went into a really weird um, um, summer series um, first game against Scotland, I was I was on the bench warming up, did my knee. Um, we then went down, which in, in retrospect was a really bad idea. Went down to I think it was Bayonne. Um, Drico, was that was Drico got Drico, Drico got you know some, some sort of you know uh, journeyman second row. Um, clapped him from behind, did his cheekbone. There was an incident that Paul O'Connell talks about in the in his book um, about um, you know, punching one of one of the players, uh, Ryan um, Caldwell. Uh, which you know left a mark as well. Then we went into the World Cup, and, and that first game we were numbers down, did not play well. But thought I thought against Georgia we were going to flip it around, and then we had this really terrible performance against Georgia, and then it just started. Like it was relentless. The pressure was in. There was the rumor mill that was starting. Like you know everyone's at each other's throats as people leave in camp. All nonsense, and it was before Twitter or before anything like that. Yeah. And it was it was just unstoppable, and it was unstoppable back home, and it must have sort of imbibed its way into us because, you know, we talk about inhibited performances. Our performance against uh, France was was shocking. And, you know, mistakes were, were made that we had, you know, we had practiced and, and we knew things that we should do and shouldn't do against France and, and yet they occurred. But I still remember like having, you know, we had meetings, um, you know, before the um, RG game. And before that RG game, we had to score four tries, yeah. beat them, score four tries, and we were talking about beating them and scoring four tries. Honestly, that, and that was and 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 
and I think we had to be thinking like that, but that was that was our mindset. And when, you know, I think Drico scored a try very early, it was like, well, this could be on. But our performance level never, you know, never rectified it. And I don't know how you turn it around. Um, it's very, very difficult. You see in the Six Nations, it's a, it's a, um, a tournament of, um, of uh, momentum. Yeah, and um, I, momentum is is really significant in World Cups as well. And whether it, being able to regather it as South Africa have done on occasion is is quite remarkable. I think. Yeah, well, actually, France did it in, in twenty eleven. You lost to Tonga in the pools in twenty eleven. England yeah. seven. What about twenty <laughs> fifteen? Massacre. We we try we try to revive it as as a playing group, and I think we just we were mistaken in our preparation uh, only concentrating on conditioning so that was going to save all our all the delay that we had on everybody else not working on us as a team and where how we wanted to play and all that jazz and we we tried to light up a bit of a sparkle that just collapsed as soon as we played uh, Ireland and Cardiff and got um, mugged and the week after comes the mighty All Blacks 2015 World Cup champs uh, was it five or six centurions you know that whole jazz and they were just killing everyone um, and I still remember you know you talk about self-belief which is a big motivator and I still remember the video session prior to that on a Thursday the coaches do not think that we have an absolute chance of even scoring a try against them and, and Patrice Lagiske the backs coach who uh, qualified Portugal for the for this World Cup does a video and he, you could tell his face he could just cannot hide it right he's been French he's been super emotional and his face is saying we've got no chance but he's still going to put out a video and he's looking at like, you, you want to look at a couple of images you know he's gonna put it, oh, I've got this one play I've got this one play off, off a scrum and if you do this you know eight picks and uh, gives it back inside for the six it's going to work and stuff and then Yannick Younger puts his hand up he goes hang on but Patrice uh, doesn't the opposition team have a yellow card Oh, so, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, they're missing a back row. So if they're missing a back row, like it's a yellow <laughs> card, that eight back inside for the six can work. Good luck, boys. <laughs> wow, that's a 62 of 19, we lose in the quarterfinals. Wow. So that one, we could have tried to put the emotional cursor, th you know, all the way up. There was no chance in the world we we're going to win it. But to be fair, we were facing Mount Everest for us. Yeah. It was just too much. So when you look at England now, do you think. Not the same, Crap not rehearsal, the same. perfect performance, or do you think that this is a team that has got a hell of a job on its hands to turn I, around? Look, I, I'm talking to you from inside and then as a support, as a as a spectator in England. So I don't know how it goes inside. I don't know how much. Genuinely, I don't mean don't mean this in a cheesy way. I don't know how much they love each other. I don't know how much they love playing with each other, in in the sense that it's a team that it have the talent, 100%. I don't know how much they want to be world champion. I don't question it, but I genuinely don't know. I know that Ireland are desperate because they've been proving me that for the last four years that it's their number one target. They really, 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 really want to do it. So can England turn it around? Yes, I think they have the talent and I think they've got the experience and I think they have the coaching staff that has proven to have some success. But does it feel a little bit like us in 2015? Yes. Now we faced the mighty All Blacks. We could have faced anybody else and we would have had a chance to just pull out a crazy one like 2007 when England just came out of back out of nowhere. So England are far behind, but they have the perfect run-up. They are on the right side of the draw. And so they will have the chance to actually create their own history, not for the last four years, but for the next three months. Well, here's uh, a question. What side of the draw do you think is going to win the World Cup? That is a very good question. Well, I think it'll be the the west side, as it were, pools A and B. A and B. It, and is, is it ex is it exclusively um, a final of of A and B? Um, on on form, That's probably a better question. Well, isn't yeah, it? on form it should be. Yeah, but there's so much. Quality yeah, there's, there's, there's something's going to. There's yeah. going to be, as you said, there's going to be a quirk here. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. there's there's going to be something, and, and we do think about load. And you know the effect um, load has on on different yeah. teams, and being able to deliver performance and not just physical but emotional. And there is a team on that side of the draw that is going to be very, very, very well fresh, and very and energy very well and an intercept and yeah. a card and injuries and uh, whatever you want. Bunker, Some, something will yeah. happen. I, I was thinking the other day actually when you when you look at the teams going in, it's sort of and you put it very nicely. You said Ireland. Have pretty much exactly where they want to be. The injury profile is good. The results have been good. From this point, it is the team that can handle all the things that are now taken away. And that is injured players and banned players and stories that come out. And you've got to be... There isn't very much that you can add to it from here. It's only what you can handle being removed, really. And England have sort of 
uh, they're, they're quite hardened to that. Well, well maybe that might be the were. story of this World Cup as well, is yellow cards, red cards, bunker. May very well be. It's, it's They've had a huge influence on really big games recently. Yeah. And whoever manages that, and it is a, it is a question of management, whoever manages those um, the best may very well come out on top. And... But more than that, I think someone is going to be... Whose KC away. is the best. Someone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Um, I think someone is going to fall foul. A big team is going to fall foul of, of a, a high headshot and it's yeah. going to impact the World Cup and they're going to be very regretful. God, yeah. It, I, I, Jeopardy I, every time. But I, well, I do find the heart rate goes up when you talk about it. Like, it yeah. is just going I'm, to I be I can't chaos. believe how yeah. excited I am. Yeah. How it's, many red cards were there in the last six eight, nations? Eight. Oh, not either, sorry, in the last World Cup, I think there were eight. Uh, in the how, last many World Cup, how many red cards were there in the last six nations then? Uh, yeah, there, are, there are lots yeah. of red cards being thrown away, so I totally agree with you. It's going to happen. I mean, the stick six, unfortunately, are completely against us at the moment, against rugby in general. It's extremely unlikely that all those big games that we're saying end up 15 men against 15 Not a men. Hope. Not a hope. And, and that's a huge, huge difference with 2019. Huge. Yeah. So they will be surprised. And also, so then that also means there's a whole another factor of coaching that has to be going yeah. on at the moment about how to exploit um, um, you know, uh, an extra man it's and back, how to deal back, with Back to Patrick Lajiske. He was ahead of his time. <laughs> 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 Ball back exactly. inside. <laughs> um, just, Tins, a final word from you. We were with England on Thursday as they left what did we what did you learn what did you feel as you watched them board um, and I actually head out there? Uh, I actually felt look they, I think I think that day they'd had a bit of an honesty session which I think they needed there, there was a there was a little edge about them hmm. I felt there was a bit of anger um, which they need but generally uh, but still a quite a good camaraderie in terms of they seemed to be getting on there was there wasn't they'd, they'd, no one separated into pods or anything like that um, it felt that they, were, they are and that's what I've heard coming out of it from a few of the players is how close they actually are but it's just not it's not turning up on the field but you know Argentina they're still saying they're not far away Argentina is their World Cup final really and not just about a win a, yes a win helps but they need a performance, and they need a performance that is different to what yeah. we've seen so far. It's got to be completely different. You know, the offloading, the keeping the ball off the floor, there just hasn't been any of that. It's, it's sort of a bit of a paint by numbers, and that needs to change. Now, do I think, we've all said here, they've definitely got the players that can do it. You know, if you get your Arundels or your, your Mays, or, you know, obviously having uh, someone like Anthony Watson gone is difficult, but we have players throughout there. I think Ben Hill's been actually very good throughout these the warm-up games one of the only stand-up players along with Courtney um, so we do have the players there we have the, we're have sending the most experienced team they got burnt in 2019 they lost in a World Cup final so those players must have that hurt of going one better only they can change their path yeah. in, Marseille. in Marseille 35 degrees beautiful stadium, incredible atmosphere. Everybody speaks about the France and New Zealand, yes, but that game will be some atmosphere followed by South Africa, Scotland the following day as some weekend of rugby. Eh? It's not just the Open. It's going to be deadly. This World Cup is going to be deadly. Exactly right. If I can make it off the boat, I'll be able to be at the game. <laughs> <laughs> on our ferry, roll on, roll off ferry. Yeah. What I love is we've sat here, We've it's been absolutely fascinating for an hour or so. Either. We're going to shake the snow globe and we're going to be looking at a completely different landscape come Monday with All Blacks oh, yeah. having beaten France, oh, yeah, England yeah. having put 30 on Argentina, Scotland and England have done with the box, yeah. Ireland having scraped past injuries. Romania, two, two, injuries. two injuries and a red card. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. That's what it's all about. Can we change the predictions next week then? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, can, yeah. we can go wherever you like. Thank you. We, do, um, we just erased, delete. Just because it's a mugs game, the winner will be? France. South Africa. I'm going who I want to win, France. New Zealand. Whoa. Only because no one else has said it. Yeah. No. yeah. History has a love, wonderful way of repeating itself. Enjoy. Have an amazing tournament. I hope you get some sleep at some point. I doubt you will, but um, enjoy every minute of it. Have a lot of fun popping back and forth from London to Dublin. <laughs> Hopefully see you out in Paris yes. for the big one. Hold on tight. <laughs>